Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson. This is my video of how I painted Walking the Canal. The historic Delaware River Canal. It runs for many miles all along the New Hope area, along the Delaware River area. The Delaware River was used for shipping and moving pro products for many, many years. It was deep dug trenches that filled in with water from the river, which was quite close and adjoining. And then barges were placed on these canals and towed along by mules. Beautiful historical area and now parkland where people can walk, ride bikes, ride horses, take a stroll. And this particular painting is from a day in the fall where my husband and I took the dog for a walk up in this beautiful area. Had a lovely time and it's very easy walking too. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope it will maybe give you some ideas for your own work. And now let's paint. Yeah, I began this painting by making a real quick sketch for perspective. The path runs along the Delaware Canal and goes backward. Once the sketch was placed, I then did some masking because there was a big sycamore tree growing next to the canal and it had a lot of white areas. I placed the masking fluid by my best guess. I put some reflections in the water. I did some masking on the grass slope next to the canal and I masked off my walker with the dog. When that was dry, I put some basic colors into the sky, such as what were in my photograph. I took good reference photographs that day and I used one of them for this particular painting. This is going on very pale, very washy with water, and it is simply cobalt blue. Moving further to the right is where I wanted some brilliant fall colors of the foliage on the trees. So I didn't want to put a lot of heavy blue over there because I didn't want it to subdue the bright colors that I hoped to put down. Just a little light color. And what I have here is a sponge. I am using a sponge to dab in the colors. The trick to using a sponge so it works for you is test it on a separate piece of paper or a separate area before you put it on your paper. At least I do. Start with your lightest color. If you are only using one sponge, your lightest color will wash out a lot easier so you can use your next darker color than using a real dark color and having to wash that out to use a light color. You've got less chance of carrying over paint if you start light. So I start light, move to my medium tones, and use my darker tones last. When I put foliage on, I keep in mind that the lightest areas will be at the top of each clump, and the clump of foliage will have a darker area at the bottom of it. And you can see me putting that in with the sponge. Lighter at the top of the clumps and darker at the bottom as well as toward the bottom of the tree itself because less light is reaching down there. Just something to give a little dimension to your painting. Now 
Now in my next color I've mixed together some red and some purple. And that is the color that the tree was, a sort of maroon. It was a nice color. I also thought it would complement with the yellow colors very nicely. Again, I'm starting with the lighter shades and getting to the darkers. Adding more intense color as I get toward the darks. There's a tendency to overdo with the sponge painting. If you put too much on, you're going to cover up all the little airy holes that show the sky through. And you're going to lose the feeling of leaves and lightness and airiness that, in my opinion, you're trying to achieve with this kind of technique. So. Do less, build up more as needed, as opposed to doing more and then feeling like, uh-oh, I can't really get this off cleanly, because you can't. There's my tip of the day. You can also use the very edge of a sponge, if it has a straight edge, to make lines, loose lines, branches, trunks, just Dip only the edge in, and then try printing with just that edge. So that was the fun part of this painting. Now, not that the rest of the painting isn't fun to do, but sponge painting is a lot of fun. Now I'm going to come in and begin filling in the path the surrounding areas, and some of the grassy slope. For the path, I've used burnt sienna and some purple lake. I've also used some yellow ochre. Some of these were used slightly mixed together, and some of them were used as shadows. I've taken a beat up old brush and made a lot more dark foliage at the bottom of the right side of the canal. I've mixed together some hooker's green dark and some indigo. And when I want to get really dark, I'll throw in a little purple or a little sepia. So the big tree on the left side of the canal is a type of fir or pine. So it has a lot of green still. The slopey area itself next to the canal curves. So as I'm painting it, I'm curving my lines. My lines go down the slopey hill to reach the canal, climb up the hill, and since the hill is slightly mounded, curve around it. Then they cross over the path. The path is where the mules walked to tow the barge. So what I'm doing now is starting to delineate the trees, tree trunks, and branches on the right hand side of the painting. Looking at my reference photo, you'll see that I have the branches weaving in and out of the clumps of foliage 
they don't go through and they don't show entirely because they're being partly hidden by the leaves. It's something that I usually try to do unless my tree is just about bare, in which case these are not just about bare. They have a lot of leaves left. Something to keep in mind for your own work so you can see what you like. The sycamore tree went on just a little bit more challengingly in that it had light spots and dark spots and I played with the shadows according to the light source side of the painting, which was on the right. I'm going back over the path and enhancing some of the shadows that fall from the trees across the canal. I'm mixing together some, again, burnt sienna and some purple lake. And I get to the walker and his dog, who you really can't even see. I realize the masking is not going to work unless they are surrounded by color. You won't see white if it's surrounded by white when it's removed. So I begin to put some color down there. The reason I left that whitish area was there was some strong sunlight right there on the path as though to light up the walker. But it needed some color in order for the masking to show so the figure would stand out. Now there might be some people who really enjoy painting lots and lots of grass. I'm not one of them. So I sort of put this off till later. And now the main object I'm trying for is to show the curvature of the slope, how there's some lighter areas, some darker areas, some runnels and some ruts. And I'm doing that by using different shades of green as well as a lot of textures. But you can see the mounds and the shadows that I'm painting up and over them. And that's how I'm trying to show that. The left side is a little bit easier on the canal path because it's much thinner and smaller. I continue building up the colors until I'm more satisfied. Now I'm using my finger to remove all the masking. Where I've overmasked, I'm now painting to fill in the areas that look awkward or wrong. I'm working around the sycamore tree, adding branches, adding shadows, preserving light colored areas or whites, as is the nature of sycamore trees bark. And I'm sort of avoiding two major areas, one being the canal itself, the water, and the other being the figure. There's a little crossover bridge at the end of the canal as well, but that should be fairly easy because that's a mechanical structure. The reason I'm avoiding the water is in my reference photo, the water looked quite confusing. It was a poor reference photo for water and reflections and trees. I didn't really want to paint it as it appeared. So I looked up some other photographs and images of the Delaware Canal until I found a reflection that looked suitable to my day, but also was more clear and less complicated and jumbled up. And I based my eventual painting of the water on that with some of my own interpretations. For the figure, I just jumped in and went ahead and did it. 
based on my photograph, and fortunately it worked out. But that's still to come. Onto the canal path, I'm adding some tracks. I'm trying to keep the tracks at random widths. Because not a lot of cars, I guess, except official vehicles, would even be going down this path. But bicycles would, and strollers for little children, and babies. Footprints from people, and animals, and horses even. So these trails, or tracks that I'm putting in, are supposed to add to the naturalness of the appearance of the traveled path. Also, I have to follow the perspective to keep them correct and on target or on track, so to speak. Now, marking where some of the tree shadows might fall across the canal and then I'm going to make sure they curve up the slope next to the canal and over it and eventually across the path. But if you make your shadows curve on a slope, then they will enhance the feeling that the slope is there. They can't be flat on a curved hillside. I'm finally tackling the water. I'm starting with some blue of the sky. I'm adding some darks along the shoreline, which are almost always there in this time of the day with the sunlight capture. Most of what I'm painting is going across horizontally. Now, if I want to reflect some trees, I will take them down vertically. However, I will try to break the images up because this was not perfectly still water and I did not want to convey still water. And in water that has breezes and slight currents, Images come and go and disappear and reappear. I'm using some of the blue of the sky. I'm using some of the yellow from the tree foliage. And I'm using some of the reds and plums from the other tree. The deepest color is my Hooker's Green Doric mixed with my Cobalt and my Indigo. And you could see that horizontal stroke that I'm using to pull in the feeling of water that's going across. There's so much texture and pattern in the rest of the picture. I want to make sure that I leave a good amount of lightness in the water to accurately reflect the lightness in the sky. It's funny, when you're painting and you feel like, okay, I didn't wreck this part, it's coming together, I have the feeling of water, it's a good feeling and quite a relief. Now to the smallest details, bits of reflection of trees, and the shadows of the trees going across the water. A little bit more color for some of the reflections. And I'll be almost done with that part. Looks like I've saved some of the masking fluid in the water until we're erasing later. 
So you see it coming off now. And I've got more work to do that I sort of forgot about doing. Back to the water. Right along the shore, <clears throat> excuse me, I often leave a paleness, a reflection, a little bit of light. It delineates where the shoreline meets the water and adds a little sparkle. In this case, that line was way too wide for the white, so I'm mostly filling it in. I will try to allow a little sparkle to remain. So that's the first thing you see me doing to make my corrections. Using my darkest color right here along the shore, because if you look at the shore right above it, it is very dark. And that's what's being reflected. I'm continuing to fill in with some blues, some yellows, some of the reds and some of the purples. You can see some of the tree trunks getting reflected and that horizontal feeling that's going across. Coming to the end of the perspective aerial area showing of the canal is where I will put this bridge. Just above the bridge, there's some more foliage showing and peeking over the top. So I'm painting that in first. Next, using my reference photo, I am painting in the bridge itself. It's a fairly simple structure. It crosses the canal at intervals. And it had to be high enough in the past when it was built to allow mules and a barge to go underneath. I wish I could show you this area in more detail, but the bridge is fairly simple. With several lines going horizontally across and several more going up vertically, two diagonals and that's about it. Last of all, I move on to my walker. I make sure that the walker is delineated by color around him. And I'm taking a lot of care to keep the light, light areas on the right side of the figure very, very pale, washed out by the sunlight. That will allow him to stand out. I'm trying to paint what I see in my photograph, not what I know about the human figure. So if his leg looks funny and curved in an odd way because he's walking at a distance, that's just what I'm painting. I think that might be my best tip on painting natural figures in a landscape. Paint what you see. But do make sure that your legs are long enough. Because from hip to foot, we do take up a large portion of our body with the legs fully a half in most people. Now this dog is a little brownish red miniature poodle. I couldn't get the size small enough at this scale, so I just went with what I could, kept the light sides, 
tried to keep the dog's position natural from seeing this back shot with a little tail and several feet. Just a suggestion of a head because that's all I saw in my photo. After I get the two figures on, I will make sure they are grounded to the path with shadowing. So I put off that water and I put off those figures until the end because they seemed sort of hard to me, challenging, but I'm feeling like I got both of them pretty successfully. I conveyed the naturalness of the position of the person walking along and the little dog. And the water retains some reflective quality and yet pulls in some colors from what's being reflected. I'm trying to show where things curve down and away from the sunlight, like the canal path on the left side of it, to show where it's shadowed, to show where the shadows go across the pathway, and then light up again on the other side. I'm re-darkening the bridge so it stands out a little bit more. And then I'm just about done. Sign my name and that's it. I hope you enjoyed my video, Walking the Canal. I enjoyed painting it. It was a challenge, let me tell you. There were some areas that were a lot of fun, and then there were some areas that really took some concentration and some experimentation. But I got it done, and I do think I conveyed some of the mood of the day, and that was my major objective. So if you liked it, you can subscribe to my videos, you can give me a thumbs up, you can make some comments or some questions, and I'll be glad to try to answer you. There's some links below to check out in case you have any questions about products I use or products that I create, or even how you might be able to buy a print of this painting if you liked it. From prints to little cards, Fine Art America makes all the products that I can use. Until next time, keep on painting.